This is the new TC Pride Podcast, episode 135, on location at the Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal's second annual Business of Pride Awards. Twin Cities Pride Podcast, we're on location in Minneapolis, beautiful Nicollet Island Pavilion, right here on the waterfront, it's beautiful, and I'm here with... Kathy Rabideau, Market President and Publisher of the Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal. So tell me about this event for people uh, who aren't familiar with it. Yeah, so this event, this is our second year, and we really started this, um, we modeled it a lot after our Seattle publication in Puget Sound, and we really wanted to honor successful individuals in the Twin Cities business community that are doing their outstanding advocacy work and and we just really wanted to bring them all together and celebrate them yeah so this is our second annual business of pride awards uh, so this has been going for a couple of years now um how did this whole thing get started great well it started we every year we kind of look at things you know what do we what are we need to be doing that we're not doing and the other thing is how are how are we serving the community and what are things that we can do to better serve the community and we just felt that this aligned with our strategy with that and how can people get involved uh, for next year? I'm assuming you guys are going to keep this thing rolling. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to see how to get involved for next year, go to mspbj.com. And then on Friday, we also will have the nomination form in our paper, so you can check it out. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'll let you get back to the event. I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Alyssa Light. Alyssa, you are uh, honored this year. I am. Yeah. What a treat. You know, it's, it's funny because uh, usually people who are honored in this way, they obviously don't do it for the recognition, but it must feel pretty great. It feels really cool, especially because um, I feel like I'm just a, an ambassador for the work that Family Tree is doing. It doesn't really have anything to do with what I'm doing. It's the organization's impact in our community. Of course, they've had a long commitment to inclusion and diversity and specifically the LGBTQ uh, plus community. Yeah, we really have, especially over the last decade, I feel like we've been in transformation, recognizing that our community is invisible in healthcare and that a community clinic like Family Tree really has an opportunity to step up and, and kind of show what's possible. What are a few ways that people can support the work that Family Tree is doing? You know, Family Tree is a nonprofit, and our primary uh, service avenue is working with people who face barriers to health insurance and to health care access. 70% of our patients are LGBTQ identified, 80% are low income, and 22% are still uninsured. So frankly, uh, voting with dollars through direct donations helps us do what we do, but also if you have great health insurance and you want a really excellent health care experience, you can vote with your health care choices and become a patient at Family Tree. You mentioned those barriers, and oftentimes those barriers are as a result of uh, different parts of people's identity. We see people who face identity-based discrimination and oppression, and we're intensely sick of the structures that maintain that discrimination. And what we hear from our communities is that they want medical providers who have an analysis around racism, homophobia, misogyny. They want medical providers who have a critique of the medical system and are then able to apply that in the care. And we're really excited as an organization to be striving towards that. Well, thanks for all the work you do in the community. Where can people find out everything they need to know about Family Tree? FamilyTreeClinic.org. Thanks. Congratulations again. I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you so much, Ryan. Ah, uh, Ezra Tuaolo. How are you doing, buddy? Nice to see you. Yeah, Great yeah. to see you again. It's been a little while. I think the last time we talked was at the Saints game where you threw out the first pitch and you, you sang the National This is a few years ago. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> been so long that uh, your organization yes. uh, that you're here promoting tonight uh, right. wasn't even around then. No, it wasn't around. So I've had the saying since I played in the NFL for, uh, since 91, hating any form is wrong. It's an umbrella that I did. So then you could put anything under it, like sexism, racism, homophobia. And just because I was in the closet at the time, so I really couldn't like really share who I truly was. So creating that umbrella, if anybody did anything wrong or said anything wrong, I could say, hey, dude, hating any form is wrong, right? So that's why, and then Two years ago, when the Super Bowl was here in Minneapolis, we, it was our inauguration. We turned Hate is Wrong into, into a, a, a nonprofit organization that raised money for anti-bullying programs. And not only that, what we do, we have a, um, we, I created a presence at the Super Bowl. We do an inclusion party, and so we're following the Super Bowl we're, wherever they go, whatever city, and we throw this inclusion party, and 100% of the proceeds go to anti-bullying programs in that city. 
So yeah, it's been just. It's been very exciting. Um, last year it was in Atlanta. We also did like a, a panel of um, uh, inclusion, hate is wrong panel, which was amazing. You know, not talking about the problems that we have at the, at the LGBTQ community, but a solution. Like, I'm tired of talking about the problems because everybody know we, know, we all know what the problem is, right? So I got a bunch of people. The Minnesota Vikings were a great sponsor of that. Uh, Atlanta Falcons were a good sponsor. Adidas is a, a huge sponsor for our organization. Um, so it's been it's been a it's been a blessed and amazing time. So so sounds like you're doing a lot of great work. How does it feel to be here with all these other people tonight that share those values? Oh, this is amazing. I mean, I've, this is the first time I've, um, that I've been I'm, I'm here. So it's, it's um, I'm very excited to learn more about this organization and what they do. Obviously, I see a lot of friends here, a lot of organizations here uh, that are promoting their businesses, promoting their organizations. So it's just it's just a perfect fit for me to come here and talk to people. Sarah, always great to talk to you. Hopefully, we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, aloha. Take care. <laughs> Rebecca Wagner. And Kevin Ringdahl. And, of course, you are with? Uh, Quorum. That's right. Quorum, yeah. 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 Woo, Quorum. Uh, Quorum is the LGBTQ plus uh, Chamber of Commerce in the Twin Cities. The Q plus is actually kind of a big deal. Oh, it totally is, because what it means is that we're including the entire community in our name, and I would also add that we're adding allies. So it's the LGBTQ plus and allied business community in Minnesota, because it takes a village to make it all happen. It does. It does. And Kevin, how does it feel to be here with all these other people that share those values uh, with Quorum? You know, it's, it's really uh, humbling and really inspiring, because I, I feel like the Business Journal is really... Um, that's like the, um, re you, you, it's a sign that we've really made it to be, to be included. And this is the second year in a row that they've done this. And what makes it even more special this year is that Rebecca Wagner, uh, the executive director of Quorum, is one of the award winners. No big deal, Rebecca. We're kind of schmancy now uh, here at Quorum, right? And uh, yes, I, I know you don't like to make it about you, but you were honored this year. Oh, no. You know what? I think this this honor, and I'm deeply grateful for it, and I don't know who nominated me, and I'm, I'm, incredibly, I'm incredibly grateful and honored, but I think what it is is a testament to the village. We work together so much to, mo to move Quorum along on a journey, and while I might be in this spotlight one, you know, today, the entire village is always in the spotlight because that's what it does. In order to move the economic needle, not only in the Twin Cities, but across Minnesota, it takes that village. Well, thank you so much. Go celebrate. Enjoy yourself. Thanks for, uh, for your time, both of you. All right. Can, thank you. Tom Pack. And Tom, you were honored this year. Yes, I was. How, awesome. how does it feel to be honored? Uh, fantastic. I've only been in the Twin Cities for three years, and I've, uh, I feel like this means to me that I've established a community here, both in the business and LGBTQ communities, and I really appreciate it. Um, well, the list of honorees is, like, super humbling to me. I'm like, why am I on this list compared to so many people who have done so many great things? So it just feels great. Charlie Rounds. And Nick Alm. And you are with? Mosier. And how does it feel to be here with all these people uh, celebrating all those things uh, that, that Mosier works for every day? Boy, for me, it's great, and it was a great honor to be one of the honorees, and it's great to see my boss work in the room, the next generation. That's right. Nick, you were recently honored, uh, too. You're, you're also in the honoree club. That is correct. Yes, yeah, different organization, but yes. Yeah, and remind folks a little bit about what, what it is that Mosher does specifically. So Mosher is a social enterprise that consults with major organizations on recruiting and retaining LGBT talent. And then we invest those dollars into LGBT-owned businesses in those countries where those organizations work. Yeah. And you guys are just on a tear lately, lots of growth. How can people get involved and help the organization grow? Yeah, you can send an email to nick at Mosier, M-O-S-S-I-E-R.org. We are actively doing workshops, events all the time. We have a strong need for people to get involved with event planning. That's something that we're always looking for. If you like mailing letters, if you like doing donor outreach and things like that, or mentoring our interns, for example, uh, we're in the hunt for mentors as well. Any of that stuff. Lots of ways to get involved, it sounds like. There are lots of ways, especially young people. Nick is our leader, and he's the next generation of leaders. It's a great opportunity for young people to actually get their voice heard. Reggie Reyes. So, Reggie, you were one of our honorees this year. Yes, very grateful and humbled by the nomination. And what organization are you with? I work for a creative agency called Knock. Um, we do a full experience design agency here in town. So people who are recognized in this way often don't do it for the recognition, but it must feel pretty great to be recognized. Uh, pretty amazing. I mean, I've been in this industry for over 20 years and it's awesome. Dennis Jolly at Gillette Children's Specialty Healthcare. And Barbara Chiaras with Gillette. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is really important across Gillette. Barbara has really made that an institutional priority for the organization since she arrived 
almost six years ago, and uh, it's one of the things that brought me to Gillette. So Gillette's mission is dealing with a group of kids that are, are different, and our mission is about inclusion and equity. So overall, those who we represent and work for, we, you know, it, it's all of us. And diversity comes easy, but we work really hard on the inclusion and equity in all forms of what we do. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing. I was really surprised to be honored by, uh, recommended by the people at Gillette. And uh, Barbara and the entire team has been fantastic about supporting me um, as a member of the LGBTQ community, but also a member of the leadership team at Gillette. Matt Hudson. And Matt, you were an honoree this year. I am, yes, representing U.S. Bank today. So I am the current president of Spectrum, which is our LGBTQ BRG. And this is my third and final year, which I'm very grateful for. But um, I've really fostered a partnership with Quorum over the years. Um, I've worked with Claire Housing. I'm trying to do a partnership with the Gay Men's Chorus externally. And then internally, we've also launched the Pride Debit Card, our LGBTQ microsite. And this year, we're very excited that we're hosting the Legacy Wall for the very first time in the state of Minnesota. When my diversity and inclusion team came to me and said that they were nominating me, I was very surprised. And really, they said it was an honor an honor for me, but at the same time, like, as Rebecca from Quorum always says, it takes a village, and it definitely takes a village even at U.S. Bank to make all this possible. My name is Colin. I'm with the Hyatt Regency Minneapolis. And Amanda, also with Hyatt Regency Minneapolis. So uh, we are a couple of the co-chairs of our High Pride team, um, and High Pride is a, um, it's a Hyatt um, business resource group, um, and we have chapters all over the country. Uh, and so our particular um, chapter, we focus a lot on working with youth in the community. Um, so we do a lot of fundraisers um, and events for the Bridge for Youth. Um, they're our community partner. Um, so we do a lot of stuff around their housing. Um, we do stuff with um, the Aliveness Project, bake cookies for their holiday expo. 7,000 cookies, 7,000 cookies a year donated to the Liveness Project for their holiday cookie giveaway that they do right around the holidays every year. So that's always really fun to do. It's a lot of cookies. Yeah. It, it is a lot of cookies. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. Manish Kalra. Manish, you're one of our honorees tonight. How does it feel? It feels great. It feels awesome. So, so tell me a little bit about uh, what led to your, uh, your being honored tonight. I think it's, uh, it's my passion. Um, a lot of work that was done in the community. Uh, I wasn't aware of the work that was going on and I just did it because I liked it so I think it was recognized and that's good about it but it, it wasn't meant to be for an award I was uh, yeah it was it's a surprise and remind folks who you work with health partners and health partners has a commitment to diversity and inclusion as well yeah we do we uh, um, we are proud to be one of the um, health cares in the, in the Twin Cities that is committed and dedicated to diversity and inclusion efforts yeah Congratulations on all your work, and I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Aaron Zimmerman, Development Director at PFUND Foundation. That's right, so tell folks a little about PFUND who maybe don't know much about them. Yeah, so PFUND is actually the only LGBTQ plus um, community foundation here in Minnesota, but also across the five-state upper Midwest region, which includes North and South Dakota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. So we've got a, a very regional focus with our, with our grant making. One thing that's important to let people know, too, is that when you look across the entire landscape of philanthropy, uh, LGBTQ causes are, are generally underfunded. Definitely. Um, right now, uh, the statistic is something like a quarter of 1% of funding goes to LGBTQ people here in the upper Midwest. And so when you think about the dollars that are going to people in need, LGBTQ people are actually quite underserved in that regard. So we do want to make sure that we support organizations like PFUND to make sure that those, uh, those funds keep coming. Yeah, so one of the things that we bring to the table is this, this regional expertise. We have, we have built a network and a, a strong understanding of the needs in the community. Via the community, we come to them and we ask them what is it that they need, and we're able to deliver those, that tailored approach to those folks. And so by contributing to PFUND, you're able to create amazing change in places that maybe aren't uh, within your, your grasp. As a, as a local Twin Cities uh, resident. Yeah. And where can people find out everything uh, that's going on with PFUND? Yeah, so we have, an org uh, we have a website, uh, www.pfundfoundation.org. Zaylor Stout. Z, great to see you again. Um, so uh, I know we've talked about your book. We've talked about a couple of things uh, the last couple of times you've been on the podcast. Uh, but we wanted to mention uh, Stout's Law specifically, so your, your law firm. 
And from what I understand, so your law firm helps businesses ensure that they have uh, an environment of inclusion and, uh, and diversity in the workplace. Yes, yes, we do. We, we're a traditional law firm, so we do the reactive stuff where you know a, law, um, a business might receive a letter saying that they're being sued or something of that effect or a demand letter. Um, and so we will represent folks in regards to that aspect. But we like working as well, working with businesses on a proactive basis. So, you know, if you hear grumblings that there's some issue going on or an employee is unhappy or they feel like they're not being treated fairly, just a prime opportunity for have us come in and do an investigation and then we can find if there's some cultural issues that need to be addressed and, and dig up those things and find out if there needs to be diversity training, if there needs to be sexual harassment prevention training, all those different types of things. It's the old, it's the old uh, allowance of prevention uh, adage, right? That's it. That's it. You can. It, it costs way less, I can assure you, to be proactive in regards to these measures than wait to receive a letter from the state or from the from the government. Absolutely. We did mention your book. A uh, little update on your book for folks. Yeah. So uh, we're it, we're the book's written. We're just waiting for um, the forward and an important blur by some very, um, very famous high name kind of folks. So we'll leave. Uh, We'll leave you holding in regards to what that is, but uh, it'll be sent to the printer soon, and then once it's out, uh, it'll eight, take eight to ten weeks, and then we'll have it in hand. Very cool. Of course, our gay history in 50 states, so to be continued. Absolutely, and you can pre-order at www.gay50states.com. Samantha Hansen, Chief Administrative Officer of North Memorial Health. Well, our commitment is to the community that we serve and ensuring and dedicating our resources to making sure we represent our community. That's in how we hire, that's in how we train, that's in how we provide services to the community and outstanding health care. Absolutely. And so how does it feel to be here with all these other people that share those values? Oh, <laughs> it is amazing, energizing, and the reason why we do what we do for the metro area. Jamie Nabuzny from Sunrise Banks. So Sunrise Banks has had a long commitment to uh, diversity and inclusion uh, and to the LGBTQ plus community. Absolutely. We're really excited to be here at the awards today. It's an amazing feeling. You look around the room and these are the people that are, are movers and shakers in the community. They're making things happen and making our, our, our community a better place. You should be as fabulous as your bank. Is that how it goes? Bank fabulous. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, man. I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. Uh, happy Pride. Happy Pride. Chad Campy. And Chad, who are you here supporting today? Uh, Alyssa Light, who's winning an award for her work as the executive director at Family Tree Clinic. So I'll also maybe tell folks who aren't familiar with your work about some of the work you've done over the years. Uh, my work, I uh, run a flip phone, so we have lots of uh, Pride events coming up in the next two weeks. It's kind of crazy. Uh, we're at First Avenue for our big Pride party. We have about 22 events between now and June 26th. That's how you roll. You guys are always having lots of big events, right? Yeah, there's something from everyone, from uh, drag brunches to uh, rooftop parties to pool parties to... Uh, competition tomorrow night we're actually doing an anti-semitism event uh, to fight uh, the cheers bar that was trying to open so that's at first Avenue tomorrow so there's lots going on and what people might not realize so all of the money that you raise goes to various causes right yeah tomorrow night all the money goes uh, to uh, Jewish community action and Jewish community raise relations and then our other events we partner with out front last year we raised about a hundred thousand dollars for them so just uh, bringing drag together to raise money and have a great time so awesome. So there, there is a lot of stuff. Where is kind of the hub where people can find out about everything that's going on? Uh, you can go to flipphoneevents.com. Nancy Lyons. I'm the CEO of Clockwork. And you were honored this year as uh, one of our, uh, our honorees. I am a big homo and I got an award for it. So how, how does it feel to be, uh, to be honored with all these other amazing people tonight? Well, I'm really grateful that the Business Journal decided to have these sorts of awards because I think, you know, somebody before me, this is not me, my friend Sue pointed out that this is probably one of the best events she's ever been to because it's really about community and community service and advocacy and the good that people are trying to do in the world. And I think having awards for that is really a worthy reason. And so getting one is just something I'm full of gratitude for. And what can you tell people about Clockwork? Clockwork is an experienced design and technology agency. We work with clients all over the globe. We want to work with you. And, and if you're not familiar, actually, you probably are familiar with Clockwork. Uh, let's talk about that iconic building that everyone's probably seen who lives in the Minneapolis area. Yeah, we do have an iconic building. It's on 15th and East Hennepin. It's yellow. People drive by it all the time and they think, what the hell do they do in there? And we do all things software, software design, digital strategy. That's what we do. But more importantly, we're a community of people that are really good at what we do. And we love each other. Mary Rose Dolezal. And you are with? Reclaim. And you know one of the honorees tonight. <laughs> yes, my lovely wife, Roya Moltaji with Roya LLC won a Business of Pride Award tonight. Yeah, you must be proud. I am proud, and I'm also proud of 
really our community because listening to what everybody who is represented up there tonight um, is doing, I just was thinking about all the connections for the queer and trans youth reclaim serves because just every act of creating inclusivity, equity, kindness, it's just creating the world that the queer and trans youth that we work with are going to be getting jobs in. <laughs> so I'm, I'm grateful. That's right. I've talked to a lot of people uh, in this community that, that, that really kind of share that same sentiment is that the reason that we do the work that we do is we want to leave a better world for those young people, right? We want to leave a world where they don't know like the challenges that, that, that we've seen in our lifetime. Yep. yep, that's absolutely true. And people usually think of financial accessibility as the main um, way that Reclaim is creating access, but cultural accessibility through having a practitioner who has walked in a um, more similar life path as you have as a client is also a really core component when we're talking about accessibility. It's that whole seeing yourself reflected thing. Seeing yourself reflected and also um, actually just the very beginning of a relationship, right? Like how trust gets created and who you feel like you can share a vulnerable story with. <laughs> It's different for different people, but for many people, um, and this is certainly my um, experience, having somebody who has shared life experience um, creates that inspiration that Ellie was talking about tonight, right? The sense of, um, you know, you've moved through these things, I can also move through these things because I see myself in you. And in you seeing yourself in me also, like that's that a mutuality in a therapeutic healing relationship, you know, that, that right creates a kind of powerful sense of agency, you know, so it's not just about somebody not um, being in pain, but also about them thriving and being powerful in the world. Seeing practitioners who share your gender identity, race identity, class identity, I think is a very, it's just such a powerful way. And actually, we have 90% of the clients who come to Reclaim have already had other experiences with practitioners and um, oftentimes two or three different practitioners and what they've continued to look for in terms of finding a therapeutic healing relationship to move into wellness is often that piece around somebody who um, whose story resonates with them as a client. www.reclaim.care is our website. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. And you can give us a call if you're looking for support. We work with 12 to 26 year olds. Um, most people come and get support around gender identity, but we work broadly with LGBTQ, queer trans community, youth and families. And 612-235-6743 is our phone number. Roya Multaji. I do relational financial planning. So by that I mean I like to focus on the behavioral and emotional side of money. and. Um, how you were taught about money growing up, what that then means for how you live it out in your life now. So what does it mean for your relationships, the way you spend, the way you save? Um, do you come from a, an abundance mentality or a fear-based mentality, et cetera, et cetera? One thing I love about what you do and the way you do it is that, so we're in Minnesota, right? And we don't talk about these things in Minnesota. <laughs> right, yeah. When I find, when I, when I talk to people and kind of give them permission to... Um, feel their feelings, not feel guilt. Um, it's actually amazing the, the type of emotion that comes out and how deep they go with exploring um, like really what mean, money means to them. And so you were honored uh, tonight uh, among all these other amazing people. How does it feel to be honored tonight? Um, it feels really lucky. So yeah, the, the honorees tonight are highly impressive and I knew I know many of them not all of them so it feels really special to have so many awesome people in our community um, that I get to know through these types of connections uh, we haven't crossed each other's paths in the past so um, it's just incredible to see the inspirational work that everyone's doing uh, it feels extremely supportive I think um, there's a sh a sense of sharing community together and being supportive together but ultimately what that means is like tonight we're here with all of our friends like a bunch of people who are in the community supportive of the community people who love us but every single day we come in contact with uh, the greater population and 
So we face good times, bad times, challenging times. What I think it means is that um, we get to be change makers just by being who we are. That's kind of lucky and kind of difficult all at the same time. But um, it's so amazing to, to like exist and inspire others by just existing. Twin Cities Pride Podcast. We are on location at the second annual Business of Pride Awards, and I'm here with? I'm Ellie Krug. And so, Ellie, you've done a lot of work in the community over the years. What are a few things that uh, people might recognize you for? I do a lot of training around human inclusivity, and um, I've also uh, was a, 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 a local nonprofit leader for a long time, working with a uh, legal access nonprofit. So you're this year's career achievement winner at the uh, Business of Pride Awards. Uh, something that some of your colleagues said about you was that you always put advocacy over achievement. I've talked to a lot of people here today, a lot of honorees, and that's something that they all have in common is that you know people that, that are recognized like this uh, very rarely set out uh, in pursuit of any kind of recognition or achievement. And that seems to ring true in that statement. Um, absolutely. I'm, I'm totally, it's very unusual for me to ever get awards, and, and that's fine because I just want to do the work and just be a transgender woman who shows up doing the work. Another one of your colleagues talked about how you have these principles, uh, among them uh, awareness, risk-taking, and compassion. I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. So that's part of a training I have called gray area thinking, and those, it's a tool set on how to be welcoming to people who are different or other. One of the most powerful parts of your uh, your speech that you gave today, you talked about how uh, essentially like how, how social media these days is really it's, it's toxic. There's so much polarization and divisiveness. Uh, something you said, you said, do not mistake the sentiments of a few in our governments or our religious institutions. Uh, can you talk a little more about that, please? Yeah, absolutely. Because um, hatred gets traction in our country. Love does not. Um, the reality is that I'm finding is that almost everyone that I'm encountering wants to be compassionate to each other. I mean, many people are afraid, but if you give them a pathway on how to be compassionate, they will. And I find many, many people are supportive of the LGBTQ community far more than those that are not. Far more. You talked about how it feels to be, uh, to, to be honored this way among so many people uh, that were honored tonight. How does it feel to be here with all of these people uh, that, that share your values and, and, and share uh, that commitment to inclusion and diversity tonight? I, it's humbling. I just... I. I, I don't know why I'm the one that got the, you know, the, the award where I got to be able to speak and no one else did. So I'm just humbled. That usually means that we picked the right person. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. Congratulations. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so very much. The TC Pride Podcast is a production of the NonPod, nonprofit podcast community and Twin Cities Pride. Subscribe now on iTunes, on Android, or by email at tcpridepodcast.org. Because we're in this together. Nonpod turns your email newsletter, blog, or video content into a more powerful, more personal, more intimate, on-demand listening experience. Your podcast. Your story. Your voice. Simplified. Amplified. Learn more now at nonpod.com.